down to a mixture of wine and beer and wood, all at once. Is that Brian? No, I don't think that's Brian. <laughs> this is their red and white. 10% um, alcohol by volume, they claim. And it's brewed with coriander and orange peel and Pinot Noir juice added with 11% of it aged in Pinot Noir barrels and the other 89% in with oak, oh, aged on oak barrel staves. So it's not bourbon barrel, pardon me. Okay, just staves. Just oak staves. It's got a lovely color, isn't it? It it's is. A lovely copper color. It's almost got a, it's got a hint of pink to it. It probably won't show up on screen, but it does have a, a hint of pink. First thing I noticed right away is the grape. You know, the yeah. grape's right out front, which is You know, Pinot Noir is a lovely. very soft, mm -hmm. fruity mm -hmm. um, grape, so it's nice. It's, it's not, you know, it's not overpowering. It's not, you know, the the big green pepper, black pepper of, a, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon. You know, the Pinot Noir can be, you know, they're fairly light, you know, fairly light as it goes, and, you know, it's not that much, um, not that much juice in it, but I know. Definitely pick up the aroma. Again, beautiful. Just a really fine, fine bead on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I poured yep. both of them so that we could, uh, so I didn't turn it back up and throw the chunks up in case it was bodily. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, nice we'll have to let Eric find out if there's chunks in it a little bit. Oh, wow, what a peaceful glass of beverage that is. Wow. Yeah. Definitely Ooh. a lot going on. Oh, and then all of a sudden the warmth comes in on the backside. Yeah, the, the alcohol is a little, <laughs> it's a little deceptive because you don't taste it right at front. No, up front, it, up front is back, sweet you know? and fruity and fun, and, and you swallow, and all of a sudden all the alcohol fumes go right back up into the back of the sinuses, and I'm just like going, okay. <laughs> wow. What a neat, what a neat choice. I mean, there's just been a yeah. very, very few people um, have explored the idea of blending um, you know, grape juice with beer and playing with it in small quantities. One of my mentors, uh, Phil Markowski at Southampton Public House, mm -hmm. has uh, for many years done one with uh, a local Chardonnay grape and Chardonnay uh, barrels. Oh, really? That sounds great. Um, Trying to remember the uh, trying to remember the name of it. I think he's actually. I think it's actually the base beer is a saison on it. Um, and I have occasionally seen it floating around. I don't think in Wisconsin, Southampton is, but I think I have seen it in Illinois. We'll have to try and track it down for us. And you know, other than that, not an awful lot of people are doing much with much with wine and beer. It's a it's a it's a tough it's a tough thing to do. But my goodness, did uh, Dogfish had pulled this off? Yeah, the alcohol does a very nice job of drying this off in the back because on the front of the palate, I'm like, wow, this is really sweet. And then and then it dries out lovely. The mm -hmm. the carbonation level is wonderful, and the you know, the alcohol is quite drying on this. And the and the wood quality is subdued too. I think you can just catch it a little bit yep. in the back, kind of in the middle of the palate. But uh, you know, it's not smoky like a bourbon barrel or anything yep. like that. It's just yep. kind of a little note. So it's very very nicely balanced. I mean, there's a real balancing act going on here. Yeah. It's, it's really well done, I think. And this the the first one was perfectly fine to just you know sit, knock back some on you know knock back on a warm afternoon or even after, you know, even that classic lawnmower beer would have been fine. This one needs some food. I'm thinking, um, I'm actually thinking a saddle of rabbit with a mushroom sauce. With the sauce actually being a Pinot Noir based sauce. Uh, something to, you know, something to pull out the richness of the, of the Pinot Noir and the spiciness. You want a, a rich but not an overly rich meat. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that... Mm -hmm. uh, well, rabbit tends to not be very fatty though. Correct. So. Uh, but it, you know, it's not fatty, but it's rich and very small. Uh -huh. You know, in mm -hmm. small portions, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's a very because you know, it is there is very little fat on it, so it's a you know very you know it's it's rich yeah. in terms of the protein yeah. as opposed to the the fat part of it. But I'm thinking I'm thinking bunny would be good with this. This is almost a uh, you know it's almost a rosé champagne. I mean, this is you know when we did the episodes a uh, year and a half ago for you know beer alternatives to New Year's Eve champagne, this would be a perfect alternative because it really comes across just like a rosé champagne. Mm -hmm. And rosé champagnes will set you back, you know, 80, 100 bucks, no problem, and this will set you back 10. Well, Jeremy, cheers. Cheers. Happy New Year's. <laughs> red and white. Go Cornell. Not that other red and white out here.